Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm working on this Honda EU2000i. This one actually belongs to a local subscriber. He noticed it was leaking fuel. He called a few local shops and none of them wanted anything to do with this generator. He then called the Honda dealer and they tried to sell him a new one. So yeah, he wanted nothing to do with that. Instead, he tracked me down and dropped this off the other day. So hopefully it's something simple like a needle that's not seating properly. Now he did mention he had to use a bit of choke to get this to run right. So regardless, I would say the carb has to be cleaned. You know, maybe it's not the carb that's leaking. It could be anything between the fuel tank and that carburetor. So he drained the gas out. So I say we put some back in, get this cover off and see if we can find where the leaks coming from. pretty clean inside. So we'll start with just a little bit of fuel. Don't see any leaks yet. Of course, this does have a fuel pump, so we may not see any leaks until it's running. Let's just turn the fuel valve on. Although the tank's pretty low, so I don't think it'll even gravity feed, but I would say it's looking pretty dry. So let's keep going. We'll fill that tank up and see if we see any signs of a leak. Fuel is filled pretty much to the top. And I don't see any signs of a leak. Nothing under the machine and nothing actively dripping. So that I would say is a good start. Let me check the oil real quick because I think the next move here is to start the machine and see if we get any kind of a leak. Yeah, plenty of oil. All right, let's try starting it. Choke's already on. We got the fuel and the ignition on and the vent is open. And I just saw a drip of fuel up here on the carb, actually. It's coming right from between the carb body and with the air box connects. So yeah, let's stop pulling it. I, I would say it's a carb issue. So let's get the air box off and get that carburetor out of there. And there's a better look at where the leak is coming from. The carb I would say is filled with fuel and it's flooding over. And that's why we have a drip where we do. So that should be an easy fix. I find it surprising that no one wanted to look at a leaking carb. It's probably the most common thing to fix on any small engine. Come okay, on. And to get this out, I think it's just three eight millimeter nuts. Maybe that one's a 10. No, it's an eight. It's just the breather tube I am disconnecting. And I think that's all that's connected to this box. A little bit of RTV around here, which does not hold up to gasoline. So do not use RTV and carbs, it's not gonna work. So to free this carb, I think we can leave these lines connected. Uh, we do need to disconnect the fuel line 
And I think there's a plug to disconnect the servo. So once we get the fuel line out of the way, we can slide this out a bit and get that servo unplugged. This cap should just come off. It's just a few tabs holding it in. There we go. And the servo just unplugs like that. All right, let's start by getting the gas out of the carb. Probably should have done that before removing it from the engine. And that screw is not coming loose. Let me try the impact. There we go. fuel that came out looks to be pretty good. So I'm going to start, I think, by getting this servo off. One thing to note, though, the servo shaft goes down into the throttle plate, and it actually goes into this plastic piece that's not actually connected to the throttle, and there's a spring in there. And it's easy to lose that spring. So when you lift this assembly off. You want to keep your thumb right there, keep everything in place so you don't lose any parts. I'm going to use the impact for this as well. These screws strip out really easily. Well, that one was pretty loose. And that does not fit. So let's try the screwdriver. There we go. We'll hold that spring in place. That lifts right off like that. And that's the spring I was talking about in this piece right here. So that comes out together. that. And now we have just a normal carb. So let's get the bowl off. It looks like a 10 millimeter. It's very clean. It's kind of surprising actually that the needle was having issues and got some more RTV here. So that I think is going to be an issue for reassembly. You know, this gasket I'm not as worried about because it's the one between the carb and the air box. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the other gasket on the engine side has a bunch of this on it as well. So it should be replaced. Potentially cleaned up, but I would say replaced. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. Needle does not appear to be stuck. Let's uh, pressure test it real quick. All right, let's try this out. Like this, the valve should be closed. And I should be able to build pressure, I would say, at least 5 PSI. Yeah, and no issues holding pressure. So that is interesting. Why 
Was it leaking? Let's keep going. Yeah, it looks like it's bleeding off anywhere above six PSI. And that, that seems good to me. So I'm not sure why this one was leaking. Unless it was just a little bit of junk in there. Needle looks fine. Don't see anything in the seat. Take out the pilot jet. Starting with the idle set screw. And to the main jet. Let's see, does that fit? Yes, it does. Wow. The main jet was loose in there. Guess it makes it easy to clean. But that could affect the way it runs. Wouldn't cause a leak, though. And that's it. I mean, this carb actually looks to be in really good shape. So, yeah, we'll run it through the ultrasonic real quick, put it back together, and we'll try it again. But based on what I'm seeing right now, I don't think this should leak. I'm going to guess this main jet is pretty small. Let's try a 76. Yep, that fits. 74 fits. Oh, I did feel a little plaque. That one fits. Yeah, so the last one that actually fits is a 73. Clean off any plaque that might be on there, especially with an engine this small. A little bit of plaque will make a big difference in how much fuel it gets. That should be enough. We'll clean out the emulsion tube, <laughs> but not with that. Let's try this. Make sure it's clear through the center. And then we'll check these passages right here. So this is the air intake for the pilot circuit. Seems fine. That's most likely the bowl vent. And there are some tiny holes on the side here. So let's try to get those clean. I think that's it. going to get this o-ring out if I can because the Harbor Freight degreaser it does tend to shrink rubber so if possible you want to remove anything like that
So after taking this out of the ultrasonic, I did wash it with some water and then used compressed air to dry it. I think that looks good. Next, I think we'll do the emulsion tube. The main jet. And let's see, needle. Sealing fine. to make sure that seats all the way down. Right now it is not. And now it clicked in place. So the idle set screw kind of helps hold that in. And, you know, this generator does change speeds, but that is servo controlled. You really shouldn't have to use the set screw for that. but I am wondering if we want to give it a tiny bit. You know, that way if the servo decides to close it at shutdown for some reason, which it shouldn't, it should open it, you have a little bit of a chance to get it started. Should do it. And just make sure the throttle still moves, that it's meshed properly with the servo, which it seems like it is. Then we just tighten it down with these two screws, one on either side. That's pretty much it. So let's get this back on. And actually, while this was cleaning the ultrasonic, I did manage to scrape off most of the RTV on both the gaskets for each side of the carb. So I think, I think we can put this back on and give it a try. Okay, let's get this back together. We'll start with the servo. Just make sure that plug is seated fully like that. And we'll get the cover on. Maybe.
Just get all those started loosely. And once we're sure everything is going to go in, we'll torque it down. Okay, let's try to start it. It's hard to believe it, but it's leaking again. And that I find odd. It could hold five PSI, no issues before cleaning it. And after cleaning it, I tested it again. I just blew through it. It was not leaking at all. So where is that fuel coming from? You know, is it an issue with the pump? Maybe building up too much pressure? I'm not sure, but I do have another carburetor for an EU 2000. So I'm tempted to put that one on. That one I know does not leak. And the surprising thing too is that even with this leak, the engine should have started and it didn't. It's very odd. Anyway, let me pause it real quick. I'm gonna throw on the other EU 2000 carb and see if we get a different result. I think I see the issue here. If you look at the float, that float is supposed to be parallel with the body of the carb, and it's not. It's sitting down quite a bit, and it's actually almost bottomed out. So there's not a lot of pressure holding that needle closed because of that. And if you look at the other EU2000 carb I have, that float is almost parallel with the deck of the carb when compared to this one. So I'm gonna take the needle out of here move it into here and see if that corrects the issue. Actually, I just moved the whole float and needle over. Yeah, that's a big difference. Let's try that out. All right, let's try this again. Joke's on, vent's on, and hopefully we don't flood. And because it's not gravity fed, it does take a few pulls to fill that bowl up. Let's turn the choke off. Am I 
good news is it's not flooding. It's not starting either. I'm going to try moving the throttle a little. It's possible it's in the closed position. When these engines shut down, the servo opens the throttle. It's the last thing it does before it loses power. And when I reassembled it, I possibly may not have put it in that position. So I'm going to try to move it. All right, it's definitely open now. All right, we get no signs of life. So I'm gonna crack the drain screw, just make sure this fuel making it into the carburetor. Yeah, fuel's making it in there. So the good news is we don't have a leaky carb anymore, but the engine's not starting and that's likely due to it being flooded earlier. So I'm gonna leave the choke off. We'll just pull it a bunch until we get a spark and hopefully it'll run. Yeah, it's gotta be flooded or we're not getting spark. So let's pull the plug out and take a look. Just check the spark real quick, which I know we have it. It has popped a few times. It actually backfired earlier when it was getting too much fuel, when it was flooding out. So most likely we just have a wet plug. All right, let's try it. It wants to go. So I couldn't see the spark tester, but I'd say we do have spark. Let me just get that plug out anyway and take a quick look. Yeah, it's pretty wet. Bit of carbon on it. So that's most likely why it's not sparking. Anyway, I've got a new plug, so I'm gonna throw that in there. Yeah, the old plug was a CR5HSB. And that's what the new plug is. I've already checked the gap and it's perfect. Try it again, it's gotta work this time. We'll turn the choke on, since we know we have a dry plug. Nice. Finally, this thing fired right up. 
first pull, engine sounds good, and it's making power. More importantly, we don't have any leaks on the carburetor. So yeah, just a bad needle and either a bad plug or one that was just flooded out, I would say by the looks of it, or maybe a combination of both. Whatever it was, we're now back in business. So I say we get the cover back on, maybe try to clean this up a bit, bring it outside and put it to the test. Well, I guess since the engine's warm, I'm gonna change the oil before putting the cover back on. And if you've ever changed the oil on an inverter generator, you know it's a pretty messy job. And you're supposed to just tip it out and let it kind of drain into something. And that kind of works, but it does make a big mess. So what I like to do usually is just suck the oil out. Generally, it's a lot easier. And it makes quite a bit less mess. And the oil is pretty dark, so it, it does need a change. And these engines don't take a lot of oil. About 0.4 quarts, or just under 400 milliliters. That's about it. Yeah, despite the way the generator looks, I don't think it's actually really dirty. I think it was just transported quite a bit in the car. So yeah, it's not that dirty. So I'm just using some WD-40 to help clean it up. And of course that'll give it a nice shine. It's only temporary though. You know, I think the real fix for this would be new plastics. But yeah, I don't think it's really worth it. So we'll just spend a minute, shine it up. And then we'll get it outside. I'm gonna try a little bit of acetone here. This is stained and my usual tricks aren't getting it off. So I will start with a little small spot. I don't think acetone will cause an issue here, but yeah, I don't wanna cover the whole thing and then find out that it just melts the plastic. I'm gonna take a second and just get these old stickers off. And I wanna wash this writing off as well because I picked up some new stickers to replace these old ones and the ones that are missing.
All right, let's get this thing started. It's actually been about a week, so it'll be interesting to see how this starts after sitting for that period of time. And once it's started, we'll take a look at the meters here. The one on the left is the oscilloscope. We can see the sine wave output with this meter. Uh, there is a lot of glare here, so most likely I'm just gonna take a screenshot of it and put it up on the screen. We've got a meter here that'll measure the harmonic distortion. Ideally, you want 5% or less. And we have the kilowatt that'll show us the voltage and the Hertz. So let's get it started and see how it does. That was actually a low oil shutdown. So, huh, pretty sure I put oil in it. And that is actually an issue I had with my own Honda EU2000i. When it's cold out, kind of like it is now, it gives false readings. So hopefully that's the case. This driveway too is not 100% level. It is about one or two degrees off level so that could be the issue. There is plenty of oil in there. So let me try to level this out a little bit better. And we'll try it again.
the output on this machine, it's impressive. From no load to full load, things were virtually unchanged. We're at 123 volts, 60 hertz, about 0.9% harmonic distortion, and the sine wave looked perfect. Uh, the engine, it does sound good. It was blowing quite a bit of smoke though for a couple minutes until it burned off. Thankfully, it did burn off, so I think we'll be okay. And the issue with the oil sensor sorted itself out, whether it was just unhappy because it was slightly unlevel or potentially due to the cold. You know, whatever it is, it seems to be fine now, and this is doing exactly what it should. So, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.